A warm morning to one and all present here. To start today's event, I call upon Nandana from Fourth Year Chemical Engineering for the invocation. Siddhi Vinayaka Pada Namaste Sakala Janarchita Poojitam Siddhi Vinayaka Pada Namaste Sakala Janarchita Poojitam Vigneshwara Charanara Vindam Shri Ganesham Prakasham Devam Vigneshwara Charanara Vindam Shri Ganesham Prakasham Devam Shanta Swarupena Siddhi Pradayaka Sindura Varnam Vakratundam Shanta Swarupena Siddhi Pradayaka Sindura Varnam Vakratundam Mushika Vahana Modaka Hastam Jnana Pradayakam Girijanandam Mushika Vahana Modaka Hastam Jnana Pradayakam Girijanandam Siddhi Vinayaka Pada Namaste Sakala Janarchita Poojitam Vigneshwara Charanara Vindam Shri Ganesham Prakasham Devam Siddhi Vinayaka Pada Namaste Sakala Janarchita Poojitam 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 Thank you, Nandana. I'm Harshita S. Nayar from 4th Year Chemical Engineering, and I'll be your host for today. Now I call upon our beloved HOD, Dr. M. Arivaragan, sir, for the welcome address and to give a small gist of our department. Good morning to everyone, and a welcome also. Uh, first of all, welcome. Um, our respected director, Madam, Dr. G. Aguila, uh, for this event. Madam always uh, motivate us and encourage us for all activities in the institute and department level. And uh, very uh, happy to welcome Dr. S. Vasudevan, Chief Scientist, CSIR, Sukri Karaykudi. Uh, Dr. Vasudevan um, uh, did a lot of work he received a lot of awards and uh, particularly publication patterns, a lot of numbers he published. Is a very, uh, SAR is very famous for water treatment technology also. And a uh, warm welcome to Dr. Vasudevan sir. And uh, I'm very pleased to uh, welcome Sri B.B. Ramanan, Chairman, Managing Director, uh, Livia Polybar Products Private Limited, Tamil Nadu. Uh, uh, Dr. Sri B. V. Ramanan, he passed out from uh, 1981 batch. And uh, uh, whenever we interact with uh, Sri B. V. Ramanan, SAR will accept immediately, will uh, come to department, encourage us, motivate us, and uh, give a lot of support to us. Uh, welcome, sir. And uh, one more important thing is, SAR, I think, uh, previously was a recall president. And uh, SAR received a um, Distinguished Alumni Award from ABJ Abdul Kalam. Is that, am I correct, sir? Yes. Uh, th that is a very proud moment. Welcome, sir. And also happy to welcome uh, uh, Sri Venkata Murugan, NS 1990 batch. Uh, 
our alumnus sir is one of the topper in the class i think second or third rank i don't know exactly but top three or fourth rank the topper and one of the topper in the class uh, i i got um, i think uh, from uh, professors sir is very dedicated sincere systematic and punctual uh, punctuality sir maintained uh, all five years uh, four years sir maintained punctuality everything that's what i received from faculty members thank you sir welcome uh, to uh, nit and uh, uh, regarding development our department started 1967 btech program uh, and then uh, 1975 we started a uh, plan design subsequently we uh, renamed it to uh, chemical engineering around 2008 and uh, 1992 we started a uh, process control and instrumentation with the collaboration of um, instrumentation and control department as a part time Subse subsequently converted to full time uh, 1998 and the energy program we started mtech energy 1986 uh, part time basis and converted to uh, 96 uh, full time subsequently transferred to csat department and uh, one more important thing is uh, unique thing is uh, mtech is started 1975 but pst we started we recognized in 1974 really interesting 1974 we recognized our department recognized as a pst department before the mtech we started and one more important thing is we are reaching under the pst very maybe very, very shortly we are nearing the under uh, we already produced uh, more than 97 psd we are nearing under the uh, under the psd maybe shortly that is a pre, very pro, proud moment for uh, chemical engineers and one more important thing is we received in uh, 2020 best department award in the uh, among all the departments in nit trichy so in this few words i uh, welcome everyone warm uh, welcome everyone for the alchemy 2023 and then uh, sri bv ramanan uh, uh, rightly mentioned about uh, this is a uh, uh, 31st alchemy we started i think uh, alchemy uh, from uh, 1992 first alchemy we started 1992 this is our 31st alchemy uh, once again i welcome everyone for alchemy 2023 thank you very much thank you ari varagan sir now i request the dignitaries on stage to uh, start the event on a divine note by lighting the lamp thank you director ma'am thank you dr vasudevan sir thank you shreya thank you ramanan sir and venkata murgan sir thank you ari varagan sir and mamshi now i request the overall coordinator of alchemy 23 to give us an inaugural uh, introduction address so good morning and my warm greetings to one and all present here 
I am Vamsi Ravi and I am immensely grateful to be standing as the overall coordinator of Alchemy 23, the National Level Chemical Symposium. And uh, firstly, I want to express my gratitude to Dr. S. Vasudevan, who is our chief guest for the day. Uh, thank you, sir, for, for being here. Welcome, sir. I would like uh, also like to extend my warm welcome to our honorable director, ma'am, Dr. G. Agla, uh, for taking time out and a busy schedule to preside over this event. Uh, a warm welcome to you, ma'am. Uh, I, I also like to express my gratitude to Sri Venkat Murgan, sir, and uh, Sri B.V. Ramanan, sir, for attending this event. Uh, last but not the least, I would like to express my respects to our beloved faculty members and Dr. M. Arivargan, our HOD, and uh, Kalesh L. Vimam and Kartikeya Shukla, sir, our faculty advisor. So, after the chaos raised by COVID-19, uh, it feels very nice to be back amongst the others. and. Uh, let us hope that there is no more coronavirus and that all the hard days are behind us. So this year for Alchemy 23, we have a stellar lineup of events, workshops and guest lectures over the next two days that will strengthen and entertain the chemical engineering minds in all of us. So as a part of our uh, Dr. S.H. Ibrahim Memorial Lecture, we have Sri Venkat Murgan MS from St. Gobain, India Private Limited. Uh, and uh, we have also added a few more events to this uh, Year's lineup, which include periodic puzzle, hydro lift, uh, chemi snap, uh, aero race, and we'll also be conducting two workshop, uh, which will be uh, Aspen workshop, and the other is how AI and ML are applied in the field of chemical engineering. So, which we feel uh, is the most happening thing right now in chemical engineering, and um, I would like to thank and welcome everyone present here on this occasion. So let us take uh, whatever all the good things we can from Alchemy 23. And on, on behalf of Team Alchemy, I hope everyone enjoys the experience at Alchemy 23. Thank you. Thank you, Vamshi. Now I request our beloved director for the presidential address, Dr. G. Akila, ma'am. Sri Venkata Murugan, the chief guest of this event, Dr. S. Vasudevan, the Ibrahim, uh, Professor Ibrahim's uh, special lecture or uh, memorial address, it's going to be given by him, and uh, our own alumni, Dr. Uh, Sri B. V. Ramanan, and head of the department, and all my dear professors, faculty members, staff, and my dear students, and especially to the coordinators of this alchemy, a very warm welcome and good morning to one and all. Indeed, it's my pleasure to be with you in this inauguration of both the, both the programs, uh, which is happening here right now. As it was rightly pointed out by your student coordinator, AI and ML, that's what right now, the, the buzzword and everybody is talking about that. But I would like to, because I basically belong to computer science, just I would like to give some hint on that. Maybe I do not know how your lecture, how the person is particularly uh, going to take that uh, session. So why I want to give some input to you people is, people definitely will think that the AI and ML is going to do everything for you. Am I right? Yes or no? The students. Can it do alone? What is required there? How an algorithm can do whatever you want? So here the important one is the domain knowledge or the knowledge which you have to represent it properly. That is the most important one. You people being the domain experts in chemical engineering, I want or I expect that this kind of programs will help you to understand whatever the requirement for the industry right now and how it could be represented for that, you can get the help of the computer science people. And once if it is being represented, what do you want only the domain experts, the chemical engineers can give? So you please work towards that. I'm sure that this work, workshop and uh, the special lecture will give you or it will be an eye opener to all the people who are attending so that I can expect the domain experts, the chemical engineers from NIT Trichy of this batch particularly you are going to provide the knowledge for all the AI and ML work. 
So in this journey, now you can ask that whether already whether it has been uh, recorded or it has been represented or not. Yes, it is being represented. So if you take uh, chemi chemistry is your base, am I right? One of the base subject for chemical engineering base is only you will be talking about the table. What table? Periodic table. How many elements? How it is being represented? What is the format is being used to represent that chem that table right now in computer? What is the format they are using? How it is being stored? All the elements or all the chemical properties, physical properties, whatever it is. Any idea? The students? No idea, am I right? Because you think that you are only the users of it. But I want you to be the providers. I do not know anything about chemical engineering. I am I'm totally not... Uh, into or had the opportunity to link, look into or even to visit the laboratory, so what kind of exper experiments you are doing. But I am sure that the knowledge, whatever you are gaining here out of these kinds of workshop, it is going to kindle your mind and you can think about the next level after 20 years, after 30 years, only with the knowledge, whatever it is being represented, the, all your AI, AI and ML can work. So the important part is the uh, that knowledge, that knowledge only the domain experts, chemical, uh, chemical engineers like you, you have to give. So I'm sure that again, once again, I reiterate that this workshop is going to give you a lot of input to you people so that we will be the contributors to the chemical engineering or the chemical uh, domain itself so that the world will depend on the knowledge whatever we are giving. Uh, giving. So all the best to all the people who from other colleges also people are there and uh, happy stay here, have wonderful and fruitful sessions here, think about it, get some knowledge and you think about it and you outcomes also you work on it and if possible if you give the feedback, in the feedback if you give your outcome that is also going to help us to improve the session in the next year also and have a wonderful st uh, stay here, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am, for that truly motivating address. Now I um, now we'll be presenting the mementos to our dignitaries. I request Director Madam to present the memento to our chief guest, Dr. S. Vasudevan, sir. I request Director Madam to give the memento to Venkata Murugan, sir. I request HOD, sir, to give the memento to Ramanan, sir. I request HOD, sir, to give the memento to Director Ma'am also. Thank you, dignitaries. Now I request Shreya to escort the dignitaries down the stage. You can get comfortable in the gallery. You can put this uh, in the laptop for PowerPoint. Yes, sir. Mm.
Our chief guest for today's event is Dr. S. Vasudevan, sir. He is a chief scientist from CSIR Sekri Karekudi. Sir completed his master's in chemistry in 1988 and he obtained a PhD in industrial chemistry from Alagappa University, Karekudi, 1995. He did his postdoc at CSIR Sekri Karekudi in 1995 and he joined as a scientist there in 1997 itself and uh, is currently a senior principal scientist over there. He has been working in diverse areas of electrochemistry for over 25 years. We are extremely honored and pleased to have you here with us today, sir. Over to you for the inaugural address. Thank you, thank you sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Director NIT and all the organizers, sir. So this is a pleasant morning uh, that everyone is uh, here. I always uh, like that chemical engineers. Whenever uh, you can go for the admission in every engineering college, they will say that you know, computer science is uh, top priority and uh, EC is the top priority. But I can say that uh, in future, uh, the chemical engineers will be the uh, future of the India or future of the world. Uh, so today what uh, I am going to talk is, I am going to share whatever the thing we want and what are the things I, I am uh, doing that uh, in that case. <coughs> you can see that electrochemistry in action, in, in future electrochemistry is the main thing. You can see now the decarbonization and batteries and hydrogen and water, everywhere the electrochemistry will play the important role. That's why I have given that electrochemistry in action. So what I am today, what I am going to thought or I am going to share is we want a clean water and we want a clean air and we want a clean energy. So these are the things can electrochemistry make. I am sure that it is correct. So electrochemistry only uh, do the things in the clean world. Uh, so that's we want the people want a smart technologies for the green life. Uh, so now you can know uh, you can know that we are India is celebrating that uh, you know Asati Ka Amit Matshav. So CSIR and Sikri also celebrating the 75th year of uh, parallel with the India. We are Sikri also celebrating the 75th years. Now it is going on, and I am very happy to say that uh, in G20 India is the presidency of this year. So with this I can just share my views. So before going to that, I can say that uh, G20, what you can see that India ranks 8th as per the Climate Change Performance Index 2023 and there is a new Climate Institute and Climate Action Network International Germany is given that very good price to India because India has the uh, greenhouse gas emission is 40% overall score and the renewable energy is 20% overall score and energy use is 20% in the overall score and climate policy is 24% overall the score. It is very, you can see that Denmark and Sweden, Chile and uh, Morocco as the only the four small countries that were ranked above the uh, India's the fourth, fifth and sixth and seventh respectively. India is the uh, tenth one and there is no country is given for the rank for the one and two and three. So this is the special uh, you know, thing for the India. We got a proud movement for this equation. And you can see the now we want the innovation. We want the technology for India. India is always depending upon the technology. The science behind is we want the technology. Because everywhere you can see that the technology is very, very important. But the technology will continue to change the world. So we should make sure that it changes for is better. You can see so many uh, technologies are grown like you can see in three th uh, before 3.5 million uh, years ago, the technology started with coke and coal. You can see in 1800 years, the technology is grown up like anything. Suppose today the, uh, the ch child is born, that the child will be the uh, 22nd uh, century born. You can see the plenty of technologies was started like vaccine, television and everything. It was started uh, from the 3,500 million years ago. And what is the familiar to use today is the photography, the radio and antibodies, 
the internet or the international space station rotating so plenty 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 is going on if your grand 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 grandparents could spend a week with you they would be blown away from your everyday life so this is we want india want the technology for the uh, future so you can see the uh, innovation cycle now we can uh, say that today uh, if if you are found something else it will come to use in the uh, second generation you can see that the first wave is uh, water power and textile iron and the second wave we have gone to steam power and third wave is electricity and other thing and fourth wave is petrochemical now as the director informed that we are in the fifth stage or sixth stage where ai and lot and robotics and clean tech is coming on so this is the uh, 25th year we are uh, the innovation cycle is uh, going on and now the now the focus is very very strong so we, you can you can just to follow the sustainable development goals there is a, the uh, un is given the 16 sustainable development goals you can choose as a chemical engineer you can choose what are the things you want for the india and all over the world i am happy to share that uh, these are the uh, you know technologies or research i was involved in the uh, 17 sustainable goals i have started with the in my research in the uh, propellant area where the rocket uh, you can see that the uh, ammonium perchlorate was used in the uh, initial fuel and in the there is a four stages so my phd is the fourth stage where the strontium perchlorate is used for the to turn the rockets so in that place the strontium perchlorate was used so this is my uh, ultimate uh, aim during my msc period i thought to do my uh, research in the uh, in isro or defense so that i started then i have shifted to batteries so during that my battery period i have developed the the group of people developed the magnesium organic batteries which will be work at minus 40 degrees centigrade it was uh, useful for the uh, in the antarctica region then i have shifted to uh, my research to the uh, water treatment where uh, we got developed the uh, removal of arsenic chloride and nitrate like that then i have shifted to my research to the hydrogen generation so the the, the generators will be uh, ready I, you can see that uh, how the how the uh, generators were developed uh, now the my concentration is the co2 removal now the decarbonization is very important so we have the material to remove the co2 from the atmosphere or the blue gas condition we have the technology to convert the co2 to methanol and ethanol i am sure that uh, my research uh, i think it will be uh, coming under this 17 uh, sustainable development goals so the as a student you have to start your career or your research uh, from this sustainable development goals definitely you can uh, go in the very good uh, shape if you take you can see that uh, no hydrogen energy this is a cartoon you can saying that uh, uh, the energies like hydrogen and wind turbine and geothermal are uh, going the buried of the oil so this is the cartoon uh, developed by the uh, person and you can see the 200 years of primary energy consumption it is started from the you know uh, coal and uh, gas and everything now it is a renewable energy where hydrogen is going to be the very important role in the energy sector and our uh, goal is india's green energy uh, mission you can see that it was announced by the budget and prime minister of india uh, the government is given 19,000, almost 2,000 crores of uh, money for the hydrogen generation. So this covers the R&D and also the implementation of hydrogen energy. So the thing is, the ultimate goal is creating the green approach for the profitability or whatever the thing. We want the green energy or the green atmosphere. So now we, if you talk the hydrogen, earlier days uh, they will say only the hydrogen. Now they are making the colors to the hydrogen based on the production. You can see that uh, they, they are given the yellow color, blue color, gray color like that. So this is based on the CO2 emission. If you go for the green hydrogen, if you electrolyze water, we, want on, uh, we, we use only the renewable energy. Even though if, if it is now green energy, but there is a small amount of carbon dioxide will be generated. So this is the starting point where you can see that which type of hydrogen you want to produce for the India. 
so this is uh, the people say that uh, green hydrogen means you can go for the electrolysis it is not a correct word you can produce the hydrogen without electricity from renewables now the india is uh, talking that you can generate the hydrogen only by renewable means it is not correct that you can use the uh, current but you can use there are seven eight type of hydrogen generation system that is only biological and electrochemical and photochemical fermentation using the biomass whatever the thing this is called the hydrogen from the renewable energy so as a chemical engineer you can make any system for the hydrogen generation uh, use so this is called the production of hydrogen with electricity from renewables so here only as secre we are going to use the electrolyzer using the wind or hydro or bio or the geothermal power so it is a hydrogen is not meant for the electrochemistry the hydrogen generation is meant for the, all the field even the biology even the chemistry you can do for the hydrogen research for the nation and i will come to the point of electrochemistry so this will be divided into low temperature and high temperature so this will be either alkaline or proton exchange membrane or the solid oxide, the solid oxide electrolysis at secre we are concentrating on the alkaline electrolyzer and proton exchange membrane electrolyzer we seen that uh, this is the very suitable for the indian conditions we have lot of parameters so if, if you give the chance to uh, talk more about only for hydrogen i am ready to give for the uh, students in the uh, later uh, later stages so this is the concept behind the proton exchange membrane where you are uh, you know splitting the water using the cation exchange membrane this is the concept you can use for the uh, proton exchange membranes so this is the first prototype model as uh, developed in sikri in 1997 so as such it is very very simple but it is it has the very very high difficulties you can see the so many components it is there using the membrane you can develop the catalyst and you can develop the gasket everything will be involved so it will take the time 5 years time from 96 to 2000 so it, uh, for a small uh, prototype model we took the 5 years time so even before the government announcement we started the research there is a small thing i want to remember in 1989 i have i have just registered my phd uh, in the ammonium perchlorate and uh, potassium perchlorate and sodium perchlorate my guide just called me that you stop the phd thesis in the propellant but in in your future is only for hydrogen so this statement was given my guide in 1889 so it is it is it is true i don't know how how my guide was told that but he said you continue the hydrogen research like that so still my hydrogen research is going on and this is the second prototype once the first prototype is easy it is very very easy to scale up and this is the third one uh, we are uh, rise to capacity and this is the ultimate one you can produce 1000 liters of hydrogen from our uh, this is the uh, you know uh, final not as a final i can say this is the uh, industry want very high pure hydrogen so you can see how small we are gone to uh, very big so here only the chemical engineer spot is very very important going to the mass transfer and heat heat transfer everything we need so in my group i have at least two chemical engineers will be there whatever the my research start i will just recruit the project assistant of chemical engineer so without chemical engineer you cannot do anything so this is the message for the chemical engineers and after that i scaled up to 5000 meter cube of hydrogen i am happy and we are analyzed all the things all the technical data with the internationally available things and finally uh, the ultimate goal is why we are doing the technologies to transfer the technology to the nation and this was transferred in 2012 so it will taken so much time for the technology transfer and this was uh, implemented in the oven so our technology is very much competent to the international level so they are having the very much difficulties in the uh, this type of tender so i am happy to see that it was installed the indian technology was installed in the uh, oman so now we are going to the slowly to the uh, using the solar power and wind power energy for the things and the 
it was not stopped still we want more uh, things to do in the uh, electrolyzer so this is the 220 goals it is a 250 goal still we are not achieved anything like that uh, the uh, the world is telling we have to achieve the uh, two uh, target of 250 like still the research is going on in this in this line and i am very proudly say that uh, our technology is very much competent in the all over the uh, world so as the chemical engineers this is the uh, balance of plant in this balance of plant your engineering or chemical engineering things are very very important in each and every stage even for the water plant here we want the very high pure water so it, it involves uh, even the water treatment research also it was involved you can see that this is the complete balance of plant now we are working on not only the electrochemistry and we are also working on the balance of plant with the all the engineers and next was the, next one is the alkaline water electrolysis uh, this is very much suitable for the indian condition because in alkaline electrolyzer all the materials are available in india even though it is a 100 volt technology but it need the complete system like vop and other things so in that uh, particular uh, uh, electrolyzer we have the electrode technology so that also we transfer to the uh, one industry now they are implementing the same electrode for the alkaline electrolyzer uh, same pm electrolyzer we have the balance of plant design it, it completely required the uh, engineers with particularly for the uh, chemical engineers like uh, heat transfer and mass transfer like that uh, and it is a uh, happy to say that in Varanasi uh, BHELS is going to start uh, the hydrogen valley so in that hydrogen valley uh, Sikri is the main partner to install the two, uh, two, uh, two megawatt alkaline electrolyzer for the for the nation so this is the high temperature electrolysis uh, still uh, we are not attempted this type of electrolysis so this is also need the uh, complete balance of plant with the chemical engineer you can see this is the timeline uh, we started in 1996 but in 2001 only we made the prototype and you can see the step by step in 2012 <coughs> in 2015 now it was the plan is uh, to make the continuous uh, to make the complete system with the solar energy and 2023 now we are working as the alkaline electrolyzer so this is the complete uh, no timeline of uh, csr secrets hydrogen development it is not very easy to uh, think that uh, uh, to develop the hydrogen generator uh, like that it is a very uh, timeline you have to fix the timeline where we are going like that and here the challenge for the students is you can go for the seawater electrolysis why i am telling is you can see in that figure we want the uh, you can see the total budget or total cost that is a 15 percent of uh, cost is going for the water so for that we have to go for the <coughs> seawater electrolysis so you need not use any pure water directly you can use the sea water and you can get the hydrogen you can see we want produce the 1 kg of hydrogen we want uh, 10 kg of fresh water so that means if you, you you can assume that 25 billion cubic meters of fresh water per year is required that means it is a yes, 62 million people's use so that means we are you know preventing the fresh water to make the you know we are making the people you uh, know 62 million people not use in the drinking water so for that this is the challenge where you can use the sea water directly without using the any process so that is the challenge given for the world so now secret also started the direct sea water electrolysis for the hydrogen and you can also make use of SO2 electrolysis. This is also one of the challenge for the chemical engineers. You can go for the uh, green hydrogen and also sulfuric acid. And apart from that, you have to make sure that hydrogen is a very dangerous fuel. You can see the some of the you know uh, accidents was take, uh, taken place. This also you can keep it in mind for the uh, safety aspect. So these are the uh, part of laboratories was destroyed using the hydrogen research 
and you can see the ultimate goal uh, which country is producing the hydrogen at what is the level so that is also available uh, in india now the uh, know all the public sector are uh, started doing the hydrogen research like uh, gail oil india ntpc and everything was planning for the hydrogen uh, you can you can see that uh, niagara falls to integrate a hydrogen center with 20 megawatt capacity so this is also you have to think wherever the energy is available they are making use of hydrogen uh, production so these are the things in india started very early 10 years back uh, that is a fueling station and uh, other things and railway is started and this is the uh, you know mahindra's uh, uh, research and china is already ahead of running the trains and the zero avia vision was started and their goal is 2040 uh, for the full aircraft that is 200 plus seat and you can see the difficulty is the volume of the fuel so you can see normally if you use the uh, you know uh, diesel or something petrol you can use the volume of small if you if you use the hydrogen the volume uh, will, will be the biggest so these are all the uh, things you have to uh, see that and you can see the automobile how much space is required for the hydrogen generation <coughs> and in germany the berlin airport is going to be the 100 percent hydrogen based airport and already started hydrogen powered home and other things and you can see the uh, readiness, readiness level where the hydrogen is going to uh, use immediately or in the future so everything you can available in the literature you can go ahead the complete literature and you can sharpen your you know research due, uh, like this and you can see the cost so we want the cost of uh, 111 that is one dollar per kg in one decade in 2020 the cost is like that in 2030 the cost will be reduced and in 2040 is like that in 2050 I am sure that almost all the places the cost of hydrogen is will be the less and I am sure that uh, you know continuously uh, the cost and other things will be increased and the development is going on uh, increasing in the hydrogen area and here the challenge is uh, in cement industry so the as a chemical engineers you can see that how to make your knowledge to the cement industry already the cement and lime is conventional process so how the hydrogen will be utilized in the cement industry so you can go through the literature how the cement industry is using the hydrogen so this is already one of the hot research is going on in electrochemical engineering labs in foreign another challenge is on ammonia industries because india want the more fertilizers so we have to change the uh, the old process to the new process uh, they are all, here also the ultimate change for the new generation student is the how the ammonia will be produced uh, using the hydrogen and the another challenge is the steel industry you can see that uh, 1.6 ton of iron ore required the cooking coal of 770 kg that means it will emit 1.9 ton of carbon dioxide so here also the hydrogen the green hydrogen is utilized for the uh, steel industry so this is all also the uh, future for the uh, research these are all the challenges in in front of uh, you so this is the uh, ultimately all the challenges suppose if you want to make the hydrogen 111 the challenges are more you can the challenges in chemistry in mechanical and chemical engineering is the more so this is the ultimate challenges to reduce the cost to the what world is required and also the in hydrogen valley also we want we want the production we want the storage we want the utilization so this is the hydrogen valley it is going to be start the hydrogen first valley uh, in varanasi so here our part is the electrolyzer and also the balance of plant uh, the people working in storage and utilization also coming for the in varanasi valley so very soon you can see the hydrogen valley in india and already you have started the 1600 kg capacity you know station in silicon valley 
and these are all the hydrogen economy challenges you have to make the mar marketing challenge and technological challenge and fuel producer and safety and regularity so it is not easy to make the hydrogen use immediately we have to go so many challenges before implementation and also sikri is doing on uh, many type of fuel cells uh, but since it is uh, not in my area i am just like that showing that here also there is a challenges for the uh, utilization of uh, hydrogen you can make use of your knowledge either in the production of hydrogen or in the utilization in the uh, fuel cells i am happy to say that uh, sikri is fuel cell is integrated in the vehicle in the car and uh, buses now it is trial runs are going on in the pune and so now i can come to the water challenges the my next preference is after the energy water also very important so the country is you know how to make uh, it is you know uh, country is well versed with the water like that so they will make the water per capita so it, it is very soon the water per capita will be going down in all over the world you can see the uh, you know per capita water availability is going on uh, decreasing apart from the energy so the water also very very uh, important so you can make think of your water research uh, concentrating on india if you see in india there is a five contaminants will be available either by the nitrate or iron or arsenic or fluoride or salinity so your concentration will be on the contaminants for the indian community so you can think of that which contaminant you want how to remove it but your system is affordable and clean and accessible you cannot do the research that uh, so much costly uh, like that so you can go for the very cheap material and very affordable material for the indian people so there is a many methods are available but this where i am going to use no electrochemical technologies so because it is environmentally compatibility and it is a flexible one and it is a selectivity like that there are many and uh, advantages over the conventional process so that we are doing the electrochemical uh, things it is very very simple that you have only the anode and cathode and do the uh, play with uh, you know electrodes uh, that's all the electrochemical uh, things are going on so the challenge or you can use the electrocoagulation electrochemistry technology by the either electrocoagulation or the ion exchange or the capacitive uh, dna session or you can go for the electro oxidation process so very very uh, simple once you can read uh, the things or literature it is very easily follow the electrochemical uh, systems for the uh, water treatment i took as a challenge for the fluoride uh, to remove the fluoride uh, from the drinking water in india so these are the consequences i seen uh, in the literature uh, then i can go on for the electro okay, whether electrochemical technology were utilized yes we are developed the uh, uh, electrochemical defluoridation technology i am happily uh, say that uh, this technology was uh, transferred to almost uh, 15 industries now they are implementing this uh, even if you see the uh, chandigarh or punjab uh, the tender came uh, only for the uh, electrochemical removal of fluoride removal so you cannot compete any other technology so this is the thing it is happening uh, now so our development is the anode here the in electrocoagulation system uh, the main thing is anode and cathode we developed uh, uh, the typical anode which which will be uh, sikri's uh, patent and we also done uh, you know electrode configuration uh, and also cell design so many things and these are all the you no know, basic things where we are started and we, where we are uh, ended up and you can see the uh, for the chemical technology how much space is required you can see the electrochemical technology how the space is very very small and this is the compact system for the electrochemical defluoridation and we are successful uh, in all the technologies so these are all the demonstration and technology transfer for that and next aim is my, my uh, thought is arsenic yes uh, we have the you know technology for the arsenic removal and this also i am happy to say that the technology was transferred and these are all the domestic and in a community model electro uh, defluoridation and technologies and my thought was gone to nitrate because we are all the agricultural country 
where the nitrate was contaminated much you can see that in village you can go to primary health center so many babies were in the blue in color because of the oxygen deficiency why the oxygen deficiency is coming that if you inhale the nitrate this will be converted to nitrate so that nitrate will take the oxygen from the blood so the baby will be the blue in color so the mother will be very much worried about the blue baby syndrome so after seeing the so many things so i started my research on uh, removal of nitrate from drinking water for the agricultural uh, area so finally uh, this was done uh, with a french partner indo french project so this was implemented in the few places i am happy that now the villagers are happy to use this type of uh, technologies and also we have the technology and the hypochlorite you can see that in the covid period uh, they wanted uh, so many uh, you know uh, chlorine based the systems so uh, we are generated the hypochlorite freely given to all the covid you know panchayat and schools uh, so this technology also transferred and this is the electrochemical technology for the ozone generation where you can see the in the bottled drinking water the final dosage is the ozone where they are using the corona discharge but here the very simple process you can uh, you know generate the ozone and this is the uh, the integrated one uh, used for the uh, villages like you can either it is fluoride or arsenic whatever the thing you can use this type of integrated one so the challenge is in the electrochemical water desalination technique still we are using the ro uh, process but we want uh, the rejection rate is less than 10 10% or 20% there is no water treatment to desalination process having the less than 20% of reject water so one of the challenge for is the electrochemical uh, you know uh, capacity uh, deionization this is the thing it is very very important for the indian countries where we have the coastal area very much and the second challenge is the, the same desalination you can make use a graphene membrane so this is the magic membrane for the de desalination once you can use the graphene membrane for the desalination process the every problems will be more this is also another challenge for the uh, people and this is the integration of uh, desalination and the energy so this type of researches is going on you can desalinate and simultaneously you can get the energy so uh, these are all the challenges in front of you to make use of the sea water converted to hydrogen or the sea water converted to the uh, drinking water and we have also the one more challenge is the uh, microbial fuel cell system you can make use of industrial water to clean the water and make the energy so Uh, yet another challenge is water and energy is like that and third my the current research is to capture the co2 from the atmosphere and convert the co2 to the ethanol methanol whatever the thing so now you can see the last week uh, there is a atmospheric river so this atmospheric rivers happen all over the world and because of the world warms so we want to reduce the rise of temperature less than 200 degree centigrade so it is definitely happened that atmospheric river in all over the world this will create a very big problem for the all over the world so very important thing is you have to capture the uh, co2 and make the world uh, cool so for that the india is uh, panchamitra uh, uh, concept and you can see that the carbon intensity will be less in 2030 and we have to capture all the carbon dioxide you can see that the carbon dioxide means very well known that the chemical engineering process it will come out from the thermal power or biogas or automobile or blast furnaces so everywhere the composition of co2 and other gases are different you have to capture or you have to develop the material depending upon the industry so that you have to cut down all the co2 uh, co2 from the atmosphere we have concentrated the material we have the technology we have transferred the technology for the co2 capturing in the flue gas condition so we can capture the you know co2 from the flue gas conditions so the adsorption is selectively it won't adsorb the moisture it won't adsorb the nitrogen like that and it it will given the multi cycle stability so we have the technology for the flue gas condition now we are planning to make the Uh, some tuning in the co2 and make the uh, adsorption of co2 from the atmosphere 
because why i am telling is in the flue gas condition the concentration of co2 is more but in the atmosphere the co2 concentration is very less so you have to tune the material like that it will you can it is very very useful uh, for the atmosphere we are planning to uh, install uh, a tower in delhi for testing of and uh, taking the you know, co2 from the atmosphere and this is the balance of plant with uh, you know uh, the chemical engineer only we made this balance of plant how to uh, you know um, uh, the industry can do for the flue gas conditions i am uh, again and again i am tell i am telling that uh, the chemical engineers are very very important in the future world and this is the uh, you know thing uh, we are developed and uh, we are transferred the technology immediately once we developed we announced uh, the industry was very very key to take the a uh, material and the conversion also the electrochemistry is a very very uh, uh, play a role because you can convert uh, the co2 to any compound ethanol methanol formate whatever the things the thing is you have to fix the catalyst and you can fix the selectivity so this is also the ultimate challenge for the chemistry or whatever the thing uh, here also we are doing the and we got the uh, the methanol efficiency of 45% still we are not satisfied that so once it was ready we are ready to transfer the uh, technology and another thing i want to make use is uh, the antioxidant water so here uh, what is the beauty is uh, whenever you run the oxygen level will will be more so the free radical formation will be high so the energy will be come down for that they will make use of vitamins for the antioxidant water so we developed Uh, the electrochemically generating the antioxidant uh, water you can see that for this uh, this is because of only for the free radical so for the free radicals coming from the uh, from our atmosphere so for that you have to take the antioxidant water uh, your your body will be free from any oxidation stress you can see a uh, breathing causes oxidative stress uh, would breathing less per minute increase the life span of humans so that is a person breathing 10 times per minute and a person breathing 20 times per minute at the same intake over a 40 years period would mean the person breathing 10 times per minutes would age slower due to the less oxidative stress damage on the body so this is the concept that i am taken that this technology also ready for the industries so it is very very useful for the all the organs you can see the examples given in the literature how the antioxidant were used for the uh, many uh, damages uh, in our uh, body and if you take it is a anti aging agent so you will become the young when you can use this water your age become a reverse and the final one is uh, my first research is perchlorate i am telling that my last slide so here is the ammonium perchlorate using for the uh, in the first stage of rockets you can see the uh, the first rocket in 1969 was utilized our ammonium perchlorate still there is no competent for ammonium perchlorate so this technology was transferred to isro so again the challenge is uh, release of perchlorate in the groundwater system which has been the very very dangerous and the most outstanding property of ammonium perchlorate is its oxygen concentration it is uh, around 54.5% of oxygen if you have the material the concentration of more than 54 or 60 or 70 the isro is ready to take your propellant so still the people are working you can see the uh, green chemistry paper uh, the recent advances in the new oxidizer for solid oxide propellant still there is no replace in the case of ammonium uh, perchlorate if if the world is ready any space organization ready to uh, take this i am happy to see that uh, i have started the, my research career uh, so uh, my ultimate goal is i i cannot stop my research in the publishing the papers so my thought is to transfer all the my research technologies to the uh, society uh, still i am doing the technology development and this is the last slide so as you are getting the knowledge why so Whatever the thing you can read, you can get the wide knowledge. But you can use the knowledge in the sharpened your talent. So your talent is the very important. 
to generate the innovations so dear students read more and sharpen and make the uh, make use your talents for the uh, in future india so i am ready to to any answer thank you sir Ionization and electricity. You just go through that paper, mm. so you can get the electrons as such. This current is a lot of uh, uh, water electrolysis process available, like alkaline and acidic, and another types is also available. Which is best one? So, <coughs> uh, in Indian condition, I am always talk about the Indian condition. I will not talk about any condition. If you use the PM electrolyzer, we have to depend on iridium. depend on the uh, cation exchange membrane still there is no manufacturer in india cation exchange membrane platinum catalyst everything we have to depend on all other countries so with respect to alkaline so 100% is available in india you can use the koh or whatever the separator so for indian condition the alkaline electrolyzer is the best for it may not be used for the stationary and other uh, automobile industries but for the you know uh, steel and the cement and whatever you can use you know uh, the hydrogen in the bunk instead of petrol bunk you can make use of alkaline electrolyzer store it and use it. so for indian condition that is the uh, best one thank you sir this is a napkin only sir cotton is same nafian is more expensive So one more uh, uh, stability stability also issue in the north yeah thank you sir morning sir uh, first of all let me actually thank you for the very informative and uh, very very uh, i think useful for chemical engineers lecture uh, one thing that is i have seen that is uh, 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 antioxidant enriched water so in that uh, what is the source of that water whether we have to take ro water or our tap water sir, for that any water for ionization you actually i've seen that the ionization is to be done for radical formation is it the, uh, we have to fix each of that water due to that ionization so we we have fixed it in neutral like that okay because if you make alkaline or you can use acidic again there is one more step will come as such you can use the whatever the drinking water Oh, only we have to actually control the current uh, voltage. So by that, I think that is we can enrich the radical formation. Is it, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Thank you very much, sir. It's a very passionate uh, presentation. Really humbled by your uh, passion uh, in many diverse fields. Many of these things are actually useful for industry like ours as well. So we are quite a uh, bit in hydrogen related uh, and also the CO to capture from the flue gas point of view. Uh, so very informative. I'll definitely get in touch with you on this. One question uh, as uh, uh, director of CSIR. Um, when we look at the, uh, uh, the blue hydrogen, uh, uh, for example, and this uh, capture, etc., the, the energy hub concept uh, can, if it pushed, I think it will uh, make sense to have the CO2. Is there any direction that uh, CSIR or the government is doing on this? Capture the CO2 will become the uh, green hydrogen. Uh, the capturing and the conversion is the main problem now. Once uh, the capturing material and the conversion is successful, you can make use of blue hydrogen as a green hydrogen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, it's a wonderful presentation and uh, we could see a lot of products developed by yes, your sir. team. Thank you. And uh, how about having the internship uh, in your lab for our undergraduate students? No Is internship. it possible? No, madam. Okay. We, uh, we have only the project that is also only for the masters. Masters, not for, the not for the undergraduates. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. It was truly a very insightful lecture. Thank you so much. We got a very quick overview of uh, the different type of hydrogen research and water research that SECRI and CSIR is doing. Thank you so much for that. And thank you uh, specifically for highlighting the role that chemical engineers play in researches like this. And I'm sure that it has definitely motivated uh, some students here to take up research and to work uh, in labs like SECRI and CSIR where we can contribute to nation building. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much for the organization. Now to introduce uh, Dr. S. H. Ibrahim sir to us, I call upon Dr. B. V. Ramanan sir. Uh, he, he is the chairman and managing director of uh, Livia Polymers Product, Private Limited, Tamil Nadu. Over to you, sir. Uh, the chemical Engineering Department gave me Distinguished Alumn Alumnus Award. Then I got Lifetime Achievement Award and now she has bestowed on me doctorate also. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good so morning everybody, uh, Director Dr. Aguila, uh, faculty members, very familiar faces, and uh, Venkat, my junior in college, and students. Yeah. Is it okay? Um, in 1992, when we started Alchemy, I was part of it. And I just was, as I was sitting here, I look back and I see nearly 47 years of my association with this department, from 76 to now. And I don't think I've ever missed even one year, except for the two years when I was in Canada for higher studies. I've always been, I've become a resident of this department, I think, in a way. And doctorate is okay for 47 years. 
I will not uh, have any disbelief when I say this is one of the best departments in this institution. You have some of the, <laughs> right from the faculty, I mean, there's never been a drop in the quality of the faculty uh, this department has had. Uh, of course, Dr. Ibrahim and the team of those days were stalwarts, but equally the team now and the teams in the last 30 years of my association, amazing, and the students have also been very strong students. And I'm very happy to be here today to introduce to you the man who started this department, Dr. S.H. Ibrahim. Dr. Ibrahim is a uh, uh, doctorate from the University of Madras, and then he became a lecturer at the AC Tech College, moved on to be an assistant professor at Indian Institute of Science, then went to NRC Canada for a research fellowship, and then came back to Trichy to start chemical engineering department. He started chemical engineering, management department, and metallurgy department. I don't think uh, many, uh, I'm sorry, I think I have, can I put this back? You need to help me with this way. He has guided around 13 candidates for PhD, very tough professor. The sight of Dr. Ibrahim we used to shiver. And, uh, but a very dedicated professor. You know, they had seven o'clock classes in the morning. Whether he took a class or not, 6.45 he will be there with the keys to open the department, get the people to clean it, and he'll be sitting there. And when classes are going on, he will walk up and down the corridor. There are times he will come and sit in the last row of the class to watch the other faculty members taking class. That was his commitment to the students. That is why after, uh, after he left NIT Trichy, he went to RIC Trichy, he went to Mohammed. He started Mohammed Satak Engineering College, spent time there till 2007, and in 2008, he left this world. We decided that we must remember and carry his memory forward in this institution. And chemical engineering department is the first department to institute a lecture in the name of its professor. And Dr. Ibrahim lecture came into being with the support of the alumni, alumni who were his students. And um, I had the privilege of giving the first lecture of Dr. Ibrahim Memorial Lecture in 2009. We raised a sum of around 12 lakhs, and now we are aiming to make it 20 lakhs so that we can start sponsoring students for conferences uh, from the alumni, from the Dr. S.H. Ibrahim Fund. So this year, the target is to reach 15, 16 lakhs, and next year, 20 lakhs. That will facilitate us to support alchemy a little more, the students with their awards, and we want to do more. We want to support the students for specific conferences which will be of benefit to them. Dr. Ibrahim received several awards during his uh, lifetime. The Vijay Ratna Award, the Vikas Ratan Award, Seva Ratna Award, Citizen of India Award, and Asia 500 Award for Barons, from Barons on who's who of Asia. Well, for us, Dr. Ibrahim was the dictator. Always looked at him that way till I landed in Calgary, where I studied chemical MS in chemical engineering. And within a month and a half after I went there, the 32nd chemical engineering conference was held in Vancouver in Canada. And Dr. Ibrahim sent me a message that he's coming, but I couldn't be there to receive him because I had a class, I mean, exams going on in my university in the first term. I told my professor that uh, my professor is coming. He asked me, what is the name? I told him, Dr. S.H. Ibrahim. After about half an hour, Dr. Behe, my professor, walked back to me and asked me, is it Dr. Ibrahim of Ibrahim Kulur formula fame? I said, yes. 
he is he, that's his phd work oh my god that's an outstanding research work that was done we need to bring him to university of calgary he personally escorted him from vancouver brought him to university of calgary he spent four days at the university lecturing various groups of students on various topics only then i realized this man actually looks quiet stubborn stern but he had a lot of chemical engineering within him so in his memory we have started this annual feature of annual lecture at the time of alchemy we also recognize the best outgoing students in chemical engineering uh, every year and this year also we have identified and uh, an outstanding achievement in mass transfer the favorite subject of dr ibrahim so this way we thought that his memory will pervade through generations of students who study in this department of chemical engineering i must thank dr arivarakan for giving us the opportunity to continue with this program and dr arnagiri he is the man who has supported us so much to get make sure that everything is done in clockwork precision dr arnagiri are you here thank you very much sir and thank you students for uh, inviting me here for this alchemy 2023 the 31st edition of alchemy all the very best in the next 3 2 days i hope you will have valuable discussions network with new friends and make sure it's a successful event all the very best thank you so much for that introduction shri bv ramnan sir now i would like to introduce our guest for today uh, shri venkata murugan ns he uh, sir is a chemical engineering graduate from nit trichy 1990 batch and he also has many more post graduate uh, qualifications in environment industrial safety cost accounting law and management etc after 8 years in ammonia manufacturing in madras fertilizers he has been with saint gobind for the past 24 years after successfully fulfilling several roles in production operational like excellence line and plant management in india china and south africa he is currently heading the operations of world glass complex in uh, shri parambadur and he is also responsible for technical of all uh, locations in shri parambadur gujarat and rajasthan i now i would like to call uh, shri venkata murugan sir for the ibrahim dr uh, sh ibrahim memorial guest lecture thank you sir I gave it to one of your students. Who was accompanying me? This one, sir? No, it's not this one. These were better. Like it has some cover. I gave mine. Let's see. Which one? No. This one only is for you, dear. No, I didn't give this one. We pen drive. Anyway, the presentation is here. So this is your pen. Just outer cover was removed. No, no, it's not here. okay uh, good morning everyone uh, respected director faculty uh, of uh, the great uh, nit trichy um, uh, fellow students very humble to be here uh, this is my second occasion on an alchemy program i was here in 2011 as well and so uh, uh, 
very passionate speech by uh, Dr. Vasudevan. So I am really humbled. And after such a passionate speech, how am I going to make up? Uh, let's see. So uh, the introduction is already done. So st the, the talk that Professor Anantaraman and uh, Mr. Uh, Ramanan uh, gave me was that glass has been there for ages. And uh, no, it's such a fragile product. And how uh, such a fragile product today is being seen as a strong product, can you take through the history? So that's the uh, no th thought that uh, Mr. Ramanan and Professor Anantaraman uh, gave me. So I'm trying to uh, do justice to that thought to give a small understanding of what this evolution uh, that has no kind of happened over the last 6,000 years. Talking about history of 6,000 years, I just wanted to park. There were a lot of takeaways that um, uh, Dr. Vasudevan mentioned to the students. One takeaway is I wanted to park at the initial stages itself, which actually, if you have watched this movie, The Man Who Knew Infinity, based on uh, Mr. Ramanujan, I mean Dr. Ramanujan. Um, when he is in UK uh, and uh, the British guy says, you Indians cannot record what you are doing. Okay, so recording, a uh, the, the lot of inventions uh, and a lot of uh, metamorphosis that happens does not get recorded. And it is important that many of the things that we today uh, get, you know, give it as taken has been uh, in an invention and a very strong struggle before it really saw the day, end of the day. So when you look into your day-to-day uh, uh, -day work, when you do your project, and uh, recording of this is going to be a very important one. And uh, I just wanted to park this thought to keep all of you um, be aware of the importance of uh, recording the uh, work that you're doing. So I'll quickly go into talking about the glass as a product, but very quickly, in two minutes, a quick introduction about St. Gobain. So started the company is not new, it's been there for three and more than three and a half centuries, started by King Louis the 14th. Since it started by the king, he himself was a customer. He wanted to have mirrors in his palace of Versailles. And so he started a company to make mirrors. And at that time, France did not have a mirror manufacturing ability. And so uh, since it, the company was started by the king, it was called as a Royal Glass Works. And the village in which the factory was started was called as Saint Gobain. And later the name of the village where the facility started became the name of the company. Over the years, it's been an uh, European company for a long time. About 100 years ago, it moved into the Americas and since 1990s, it's in India as well. Uh, today, uh, present in more than 72 countries, uh, over 50 billion euro turnover and uh, about 170,000 employees and out of which 17 are from our college. So guys, if you want to you know, make our uh, company grow uh, in a proportion of 1 is to 10,000, I think you should join St. Gobain. So you're welcome to join and progress the company. Um, today, uh, largely been a manufacturing and distributor of uh, building materials. Uh, today, we are look, working on two axes as a business strategy. One is in terms of providing comfort uh, to the humans as well as on the sustainability point of view. In living places, we need to bring the well-being to the people. How that's happening? Innovation has been in our DNA, not just in the manufacturing, but in any organization where Apple tops the list on the top 100 innovating companies, St. Cobain has been there for the last 15 years without slipping its position and has been only increasing its ranking. And all, uh, one out of uh, five products today uh, did not have, uh, was not existing five years ago. And, uh, uh, that was 15 years back and today one out of four products that uh, did not exist before has been uh, made possible with the R&D work. And I'm also happy to say that we have more than 170 PhDs and 50 masters working in our R&D center in IIT Metas Research Park. And uh, that's making quite a lot of uh, uh, you know, impact in terms of our business. A company which has been there for more than three and a half centuries needs to have this kind of innovation as a DNA. We strongly believe in that. And today, largely speaking, quite a bit of work that uh, Dr. Vasudevan has been doing is what we are also trying to do. And for the work that's happening in our R&D centers, we have been adjudged as, uh, once again, consistently as one of the top 100 most sustainable corporations across the world. And uh, quite a lot of activity has been happening to uh, combat the uh, climate change. In fact, uh, the United Nations uh, Environment Program, the COP, 
21, which in it happened in 2016 in Paris, we were the primary sponsors and uh, we committed ourselves to be uh, net carbon neutral against the UN no, uh, no, uh, norm of 2060, we committed to be net carbon neutral by 2050. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, brief introduction about uh, our company. Uh, now coming to the topic that has been given to me in terms of the glass as a product, how it has evolved. Um, even this particular information that you will see in the next slides is a little bit new to me. Uh, what happened uh, in India, it's uh, Mr. I.D. Varshini who went to Japan to uh, do his masters those days. Uh, he came back, he didn't have a liking to what he was expected to do. He came back and joined hands with uh, Lokmanya Tilak and started the first glass factory uh, in the 19, um, 1907. The company was called as Spice of Fun Glass Works. That's a bit of an introduction of what happened in India on the glass point of view. The glass as an industry has been there for uh, 6,000 years as I mentioned. It has transformed the way it's getting manufactured in different ways. About 680 when the recording is known, uh, it has been made in the process of the disc process. Even there are few experts around the world today who are making the glass uh, this uh, spinning method of disc. And uh, about uh, 1280 around the glass was made in the blowing methodology. and. Uh, uh, in 1693, uh, this is actually the Royal Glass Works of Sangamon, which remained the manufacturing process for more than two and a half centuries after this. Whom you see on the right extreme is Princess Antoinette, uh, who uh, is the great granddaughter of uh, King Louis XIV. When she visited the facility of uh, Sangamon, this particular artwork was done. And the glass was being poured on a table and being rolled to make a flat glass. And then uh, in the industry, we are talking about the industry 4.0 scenario and the industry 2.0, the mass production period, uh, everything became a continuous process industry, even the ammonia manufacturing, the Heber-Bosch process happened more or less around that time in 1930s. And then the, the mass production of the Ford uh, no, the Model T happened. And even in the glass, the continuous process industry evolved around that particular period called the four called uh, Colburn process, uh, which made the glass a continuous process industry. The process that exists today is the uh, float glass manufacturing process since 1957. This is what it exists in all our uh, plants. Uh, the glass is floating on a molten tin when it is being formed to give it the best optical quality. The best flattest surface you can aim on earth is the liquid surface. So we use this concept to make the glass float on a molten tin to give it the best flat uh, surface. So that's a brief history of how the basic glass has been made. So the glass is made, but it has to be used. Where it is, you uh, know, what is the expectations of each of us in terms of when it comes to using the glass. It has to have the performance, it has to be safe, it need to be adaptable to my requirements and I need to be able to get what I want and it of course has the aesthetics value as well how this is getting transformed in today's world and how it has become stronger. We'll, next uh, few minutes, we'll talk about it. The glass processing, quite a bit of glass processing methodology exists. The basic one is, of course, the tempering. Uh, you take the glass uh, temperature after, once the glass, is, uh, the glass is being produced, it is annealed. The rate of cooling is in a slow form. That is when you can cut the glass. After toughening, you will not be able to cut the glass. And then when the annealed glass is being made, then you cut to the requirement and take the glass to a temperature above the annealing point, above the Tg value of about 550 degrees centigrade. When you take it and then you do a faster cooling, then you, the glass gets tempered. And that's how the toughened glass is made. The next type of glass which is widely available in the market is the heat strengthened glass in which it's not really uh, exactly the toughening process. The toughened glass, for example, when you apply 10 times, the compressive stress on the glass is 10x than the annealed glass. You need to apply 10 times more force than an annealed glass to break it. But if even if you are able to break it with that strength, it will not break with sharpness, which means it will not have a sharp edges and it will form into smaller granules and it will not harm you. The side lights of the car, the back lights of the car are all tempered glasses. Even I can share an example of my cousin who met with an accident when she was a teacher going along with the students and uh, she was having a uh, no, uh, bad injury and she was complaining that something is not wrong with my back. And uh, they said nothing is there in the x-ray, they did the scan, nothing that she was still complaining. And later they had a surgery done and they found a piece of glass, the glass is broken 
on the uh, on the vehicle uh, a piece of uh, toughened glass was probably gone in but it did not injure any of our organs so the advantage of the toughened glasses that we have on the side lights and the back lights is that it can shatter on a major accident but it forms into a gra uh, no, small granules with this uh, not a sharp edges and thereby doesn't injure the person the heat strengthened glass it has an higher compressive stress it does not break very easily but it is still not to the same level as the tempered glass it's a, a kind of an we can call it a poor man's tempered glass the one on which we on the see on the windshields which is the laminated glass where two thin sheets of glass are interlayered with a pvb polyvinyl butyl and these three are fused together we take the temperature again above the tg values and then we uh, you know form the glass with the shape and uh, make this laminated glass the glass can still break in an accident but the laminated sheet holds this uh, glasses and thereby uh, while the side lights and the back lights will shatter and fall but the uh, the lamination glasses will stay together the next type of glass that we make is the uh, double glazed units uh, which has got an insulation layer and uh, we have a spacer in between our space to avoid the trans heat transfer from happening two sheets of glass with an void space in between where you need to uh, uh, you know uh, cut down the heat and also the noise you can use the double glazed units two toughened glasses with an spacer in between so the uh, uh, how strong is this toughened glasses we are talking about so sengaben nearly uh, 90 years back did this uh, real trial of taking a large pane of a jumbo glass 20 square meter glass and put uh, three elephants into it and lifted it up in a crane and it did not break so it was a real experiment that was proved to the world that you know the glass toughened how strong it is and today uh, there are a lot of pictures i just put two pictures for today's presentation the skywalk i think uh, in uh, all of you are aware of the skywalk in the us the first skywalk in that also was a sengoben glass coming from germany those days about uh, 17 years back when the skywalk opened up in uh, U us and this one is the first skywalk of india again a sengoben product which is in sikkim so the glass performance uh, the next stage is in terms of Uh, uh how the uh, the fire safety glasses all the glasses that we were talking about makes the glass little stronger and not easy to break we'll also see some more examples for high performance glasses but these are still when it has a fire load the the glass may not be able to withstand the fire load and what are we doing about it we'll come to it so we'll uh, we are going to see uh, something which is uh, no more stronger the glass that's what i thought was your expectation sir uh, to talk to the students on this so in terms of attack the bullet or the blast point of view in france we are a french company so uh, president uh, george uh, clemenceau uh, was shot at uh, in 1917 and uh, uh, i think six uh, bullets were fired and he lived the rest of his life with one of the bullet in his body so at that time we didn't have this laminated glass or the bulletproof glasses which exist today and which could have actually prevented this kind of assassination attempts how uh, these things are happening for example uh, we have uh, a company within sengoben group called as the vetrotech which makes uh, this kind of uh, no uh, uh, impactful glasses on uh, anti vandalism uh, there are uh, glasses uh, which can Uh, take up to uh, uh, you know the load that you see here in up to the 363 newton meter of uh, uh, the force that can uh, be applied it's quite uh, helpful uh, where you have a high risk in terms of uh, your houses protection you can go for anti burglary uh, uh, and there are different products which can uh, help you to avoid the uh, the glasses being broken whatever the uh, force that the uh the thieves can uh, try to do the, you you will still be protected so the en standard prescribes the norms and the several of the products that you see can take up to the load that we see how that is uh, made the en standard in terms of the bulletproof i'll use this one example to say i think the process of manufacturing the glasses are quite similar in nature so uh, this talks about the cn 1063 talks about the two types of splintering and the non splintering product basically the bulletproof glasses is nothing but a toughened glasses with multiple laminations on the right hand side you see that the splintering with three laminations it, the glass will still uh, no kind of splinter and it has a certain level of protection 
but the one with the five layer of uh, glasses you will find that the splintering will not happen some of you have visited uh, dubai for example in the dubai mall you will see a such a large uh, fish pond and which has got multiple layers if i am not wrong there are 14 layers of glass which has been put in in that particular aquarium uh, which holds that hydro uh, static pressure uh, to withstand the force of um, and so uh, in terms of uh, what the uh, level of uh, importance that you need in terms of protection against uh, the bullet resistance uh, there are quite a bit of norms that exist and there are a lot of various products uh, that are possible uh, to make uh, uh, to make this uh, and also when when you make this the size of the glass like your aircraft window glass and gobain makes those glasses uh, in specialized product how to make it uh, thinner is uh, something that we are looking at the insulated glass unit option provides that op uh, possibility to reduce the thickness of the glass thereby you will still get the same safety without you no know, having to go for a heavy weight uh, solutions okay so uh, quite a bit on uh, on uh, those kind of uh, activities uh, in terms of the blast uh, the explosion proof glasses the quite a lot of activity we have now coming to the fire safety glass which is uh, where we are quite proud uh, that we are making strong progress earlier it used to be an uh, wired frg glasses it cannot withstand to the level today uh, the products uh, that we make uh, uh, are capable of withstanding uh, 1000 uh, plus temperature uh, for a period of more than 2 hours earlier it used to be less than 30 minutes now we can use the special contraflam glasses that we make with a special uh, product in between which fused with the glass uh, is able to withstand this temperature so that's a bit on uh, the safety of the glasses uh, that we are making Uh, there's a lot of drive as a professional uh, as an engineer working in a professionally managed organization i can tell you very strongly that the work uh, the dr vasudevan is doing the industry is waiting uh, really earlier we used to be you uh, know uh, saying several things that we want to do it's good to have for commercial reasons point of view when the pricing is not really making sense the things were not really happening but today the co2 sustainability point of view things are definitely making a change and sengobain for its committed commitment to the net carbon neutrality the second topic is on sustainability that i will talk about and the group's commitment is in terms of making the net carbon neutrality and uh, even uh, uh, no uh, the pro professor uh, dr akila director was mentioning that um, you have to make this net carbon neutrality despite the growth okay, so uh, how do you um, know kind of Uh, grow as well as cut down the carbon i mean the easy thing is not to produce and not to emit but we have to also produce and the production uh, you know expectations are not really uh, you know small things these by 2060 the amount of raw material the raw material where does the carbon dioxide come for glass manufacturing we use soda ash we use limestone we use dolomite sodium carbonate calcium carbonate magnesium carbonate cao mgo ca uh, na2o goes into the glass the co2 goes out into the uh, into the atmosphere in fact for every 100 kg of raw material we put in only 82.3 kg becomes glass the 17.7 kg goes out as co2 there's a huge amount of co2 that goes out and also on the um, fuel primarily the oil or the gas that we use as also got uh, depending upon the, if you use lng it's more than 90% uh, uh, no methane so that is relatively uh, the low carbon emitting with high uh, propane the lpg is the next emitter and the hfo emits even more uh, the co2 uh, percentage so quite a lot of uh, co2 comes out of the fuel that we use and uh, of course the electricity consumption in our production is not significantly high but still even that electricity if it is not green is a problem for us so uh, the raw material is an uh, and an energy are an important emitter of the co2 and despite the growth that is going to happen in terms of the consumption of the raw material and energy how are we going to be net carbon neutral and by 2030 how are we going to reduce it to by a third on different axes is being worked on and as i said in 2016 uh, 2015 uh, we committed uh, to in the cop 21 where we were the primary sponsors for the uh, cop 21 when it happened in paris that we will abide by this and sev several set of actions are happening several leverages that we are doing in terms of uh, the um, uh, possibility the innovation is been in our dna so a lot of thrust is based even again the director was mentioning um, there is not much of chemical engineering progress that's happening 
okay uh, many uh, is quite possible that whatever has been existing many decades ago uh, is still holds good and statically and then the industry has not progressed but i can tell you uh, having decided to stay in manufacturing being a chemical engineer things are definitely changing after uh, nearly 35 years i'm seeing this uh, the change happening in terms of a definitive need for quality minds to make a change particularly on the sustainability point of view where we cannot really continue the operations the way we have been in the past so innovation has to be done the innovation in the uh, the recent decades has been on uh, on the uh, on the electronics and the computer science basis but the sustainability is bringing the topic back into the chemical engineering focus and innovation uh, in several things uh, is happening i'll give some examples on that of course on the energy point of view to optimize and reduce our energy use and then go into the carbon free energy and also to touch base in terms of the the scope 3 the suppliers and the logistics aspect as well so where are we doing this the industry 4.0 is really making a significant difference i think there are a lot of uh, you know uh, many uh, we talked about the ai and ml uh, in the past i think the director spoke about it um, we are quite uh, in fact there are 700 engineers uh, working for sangaban globally but based in chennai okay they are working on industry 4.0 projects for a company which is in the building uh, building metal space like glass gypsum boards the plasters, the tile adhesives, these are the products that we make. To have Industry 4.0, I invite all of you to come uh, for an industry visit and uh, you, know, you will see, uh, are we making the glass the way we imagined it to be? I think the way the things are changed by the bright engineers who are bringing in the, uh, the tools of uh, the, the automation in the past, the Industry 4.0, the sensors and the IoT connectivity that we have, really things are making a significant change. The modeling work that is happening, the CFD, the numeric modeling, the chemical engineers domain is bringing in a lot of energy efficiency. I can say we rebuilt our furnace uh, uh, in uh, 2021 after 20 years of operation. The first plant started in 2000. The energy is 25% more efficient. That's not happened just by luck. It's an improvement in the uh, you know, materials as well as in terms of the design aspects with the modeling, etc. as well. So there is a lot of uh, possibility that the industry 4.0 is doing in terms of uh, the sustainability point of view. Quite a lot on the recycling. We make about 1.25 million tons of glass a year. And the previous high of colored recycling has been only 60,000 tons. Last year we have touched 1 lakh tons. This year we are going to go for 1.5 lakh tons. So quite a bit of activity are uh, happening in terms of how we can, uh, earlier we say that, no, the recycling is not possible. Our glass is the best in quality. We will not be able to recycle. Today, those things are gone. Today, we are like milk van delivery system. We are going with plastic baskets to the uh, shop by shop and collecting those colored to uh, retrieve it back from the large retailers and the processes. We are having a separate supply chain system to collect it back. So a lot of work is happening on the recycling basis. The raw material point of view, we are substituting with low carbon. Uh, material the limestone dolomite or the soda ash i talked about uh, has got a possible replacement it comes with a lot of need for scouting around for this rare raw materials which is silicate based not the carbonate based and so we have already made a change in our uh, one of our lines which makes a tinted glass to do away with the limestone and go for an alternate uh, no raw material uh, that's uh, completely eliminating the 44 percent co2 that comes out of the limestone uh, is reduced to less than 4 percentage. So quite a lot of activity happening on the raw material front. And the carbon capture, Professor uh, uh, was even already mentioned about it. We know the technology exists in Tutukurin, they're capturing the CO2 and they're using it for sort ash manufacturing. Uh, the, that's where the need is in terms of whether it can be a circular economy uh, in terms of an energy hub that will be a way forward. We are waiting for uh, some of the customers who will be able to take this carbon and make either a urea or a soda ash. That's a possibility that exists with the carbon capture. So uh, we are emitting a lot of CO2, but there is also uh, our products are reducing the CO2. Many of the glasses that you see are all uh, glasses. Uh, earlier, uh, 20 years back, when we use the magnetron uh, coated glasses that we make, reduces the electricity consumption by 45 percentage. Today, we have products which can reduce it by 70 percentage. 
in terms of the type of magnetron coating that we can apply with the sputtering process of the physical vapor deposition that happens. Even our insulation materials, the solutions for uh, several of the Tesla cars, not all the Tesla, we supply quite a bit from our Mexico plant to Tesla in US and uh, many of these cars uh, come with uh, several uh, solutions on the environmental aspect as well. So uh, I'll end with uh, what we are doing. This is our facility in Sri Perambutur. Uh, we have two rainwater harvesting ponds. In fact, more than 81 uh, percentage of our water that we consume in our land are coming from the rainwater captured from the roofs. And in fact, also on the top bottom right chart, you can see that the specific consumption, several activities have been taken to reduce the water consumption. The specific consumption, which used to be like 1.4 kiloliters per ton of glass is reduced to 0 0.36 by 20 uh, last year. Uh, when visitors come, they where, where is the plant? You see only the you know the trees in your places. So we have more than 1.1.3 uh, uh, lakh trees in our campus and the adjacent uh, government land that we are created an urban forest. Um, uh, and the renewable energy today, as we speak, uh, we are at 27 percentage renewable energy. We have concrete uh, agreements signed where we will go up to 54 percentage by end of the year and by. Uh, next year, we think with the carbon uh, uh, the purchases that we do on the renewable power will be 100 percent on the renewable. Several investments we have made uh, to make uh, the waste rate recovery systems. And uh, of course, earlier when we started the career in St. Gobain, hardly 5 percentage of the glasses were not going without wood. Today, almost like 2-3 percentage of the glass alone uses wood as a packaging. Uh, 97 percentage of the glasses go without any packaging. We have developed the uh, the transportation system and also develop the uh, end user, the customer, the processes to be able to handle the glasses without packing. Uh, this is the last slide. So in a several ways in the energy atmosphere in terms of the quality of the environment, in terms of the amount of resources that is required in terms of light constrictions, etc. And also using the smart systems, the glass can really become an, a green uh, building product thereby the CO2 can come down. So uh, that's the two bit I wanted to give a uh, thought in terms of the safety of the glasses and in sustainability point of view, how glass, despite being a 6,000 year old product, is here to stay possibly forever. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. There are some questions I'll be happy to answer here. From the students, yeah. How many of you want to join Sangobain? No answer. That's a good captain. Okay, so not impressed. <laughs> okay, so there are no questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Sorry, sir. <laughs> sure, sure. Our HR does the pitch uh, in the campus recruitment drive. We have two students uh, from the previous batch who are with us, so I think they can check with their seniors to get the answers here. Yeah. Sir, thank you for the interesting talk and. Is there any research on St. Gobain for the super hydrophobic glasses which could be installed in the automobiles? Yeah. Like, Actually, there have been much uh, research on uh, yes. uh, different side, but is there any future vehicle could be boasted without any wipers, even advanced cars? Correct. So, uh, in fact, uh, it exists. Uh, I did not put it. Okay, so the uh, hydrophobic glasses exist for shower cubicles. Okay, so you don't have those haziness on the mirror and also the shower partitions that is existing. And even uh, we have the aqua control glasses uh, for the windshields with a special coating, okay, uh, which reduces the uh, amount of glass, uh, the, uh, improves the visibility to some extent, but you still need a wiper. And in fact, uh, we did a research way back in 2010 when I was in li uh, line manager in the line, we made an SIOC coating. Uh, uh, silane and CO2 uh, uh, with the presence of ethylene that provides an, uh, a kind of an, a rough uh, uh, finish and then in Germany 
research center, they did this additional coating to do away completely with the wiper. Uh, but that did not really take off. The coating was not sustaining for the number of years that the car will run. So, it was okay for the initial days, but from the longevity point of view, we did not sustain. So, uh, it is reduced with the coating that we are providing. There are, uh, I have a slide, if uh, you no, know, it is on the public domain as well, I can share that. Uh, uh, it exists in certain models, high-end cars, where uh, the visibility of the, uh, the, uh, the driver improves significantly with that coated glass, but still you need a wiper at this stage. So, the eclipse glass, what you are mentioning, will also be, could also be used for uh, solar panel based, like frequent panels have. For the, uh, you mean the solar panels for the. Yeah. Uh, I did not cover the solar uh, glass point of view. We do have, we are not making it in India the solar glasses. Okay, okay so uh, the solar glass we have been making it for ages in several countries. It is, comes with an uh, you know, uh, much higher against an 89 percentage light transmission yes. and an 86 percentage energy transmission TE values. It comes with 94 percentage uh, you know, uh, transmission of energy. So, that kind of glass and uh, additional that pattern that goes with that. So, that whatever the reflection that happens also put, put back into the module and thereby the energy optimization is maximized. Fine, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah, thank you for the lecture. It was like so inspiring. Uh, my question is, uh, from, uh, from already used uh, broken glass scrap is there uh, any technology that try to uh, reuse the uh, scraps into uh, newer or let's say like uh, alternate version of a glass? Yes, yes, the glass, uh, whatever earlier, uh, no, the glasses only made by Sengumen, we will use it that too carefully. Now the those days are gone. Any colored, we are like, uh, you know, uh, taking it back. Even we have started to use bottle colored and, uh, uh, and uh, other types of colored. We have several uh, advanced color treatment system. Uh, which employs the eddy current principle as well as optical sorting. The eddy current will eliminate the metal and the good car packages, any sorts of metallic pollution, even the fringe of that. And the uh, optical sorter will sort the glass by the color and thereby will be able to use any of the glasses even if it is mixed and not segregated back into the system. Yeah. It was a nice lecture. My doubt is uh, whether any self self cleaning gas technology is there. Yes, yes. Self cleaning glass has been there for now 25 years. Uh, uh, it's uh, called BioClean glass. Okay, so the special coating that's uh, applied. Uh, what happens is it does not allow uh, the dust to settle for free. You uh, know, most of the times so with the rainwater, it will be uh, so getting. My doubt is self healing. Self healing. Antimicrobial, you mean? So, healing, sir. Healing. Small cracks can be removed like that. Narrow cracks over the glass surface. To, uh, to self. Cleaning, not cleaning, sir. Healing, healing. Self healing. Self healing. It's just like a wound. We, when we are having a wound, it get healed and it get normal skin. Like that, glass technology. Is there anything? Uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, uh, if the self-healing is possible. Uh, I just can, can give one answer. Self-cleaning is possible. Okay. Any dirt that is existing is possible. The weathering doesn't happen uh, in uh, in glass. Uh, you don't get an weathering. You have an water. It can stay for uh, ages, many decades, sometimes even centuries. It can remain without any weathering attack. But the weathering can pos is possible when the glass is stored in a very humid condition and not in a separate sheet and you don't allow it to dry for many months. Then oh. the weathering attack, the soda is getting eaten away and the, with the, uh, the soda from the glass starts to react with the moisture and forms the cycles of sodium hydroxides. That leaves a patch that will not go away forever. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, very general question. You are an expert in glass. Sar is expert in polymer. He is making polymer. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, what is your advice? Glass bottle or polymer Definitely. bottle? Definitely. <laughs> Even if Mr. Ramanan is offended with this answer, 
know uh, uh, without prejudice and unbiased uh, view uh, as an independent the glass is uh, by far it's been there for ages for 6000 years and is going to stay for a simple reason uh, i think we melt a uh, glass the silica melting point is 1742 degrees centigrade we don't go to the temperature we apply the flux to reduce the melting point so uh, from the uh, health point of view and every aspect point of view i think the more durable it's a natural product and uh, from the environment as well point of view i'm sorry sir but my vote is for glass thank you Uh, thank you so much for that very insightful lecture, sir. Uh, it was truly interesting, and it was very intriguing to know about the kind of glass that is being used, and be it in the Dubai Aquarium or uh, in the Skywalk and places like that. And it's also very um, interesting and motivating to know that a company like Saint Gobind, in spite of being centuries old and being a mammoth commercial organization, is still being a leader in making technology sustainable, and it is showing the path for other companies that when there is a will, there is a way. And definitely, as chemical engineers. Yes, we can work on innovation and research, and definitely make processes like manufacturing, packaging, and everything more sustainable. So, thank you so much for this lecture, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Which one? This one. Which is this one? Uh, now I request. Uh, yes, yes. Now I request Sri B V Ramanan sir to felicitate uh, Sri Venkata Murugan sir. Thank you, sir. Now I request Ramnan sir to please read out the names of the award winners. Uh, if Venkata Murugan sir can give the awards to the winners. As I told you, Dr. Ibrahim's favorite subject was mass transfer, and I'm very happy to announce that Ravi Naga Vamsi. is the uh, student who is going to receive this award it carries a certificate and rupees 10000 in cash a rather check 5000 i'm sorry now uh, the ibrahim memorial award for best outgoing student we had a tough competition six students participated and two of them were just decimal numbers apart so we decided to give two awards this time instead of one first sankalp dikshit 10000 rupees this time i am right the second award is won by rahul melkani thank you sir thank you so much now i call upon the chairperson of chemical engineering association shreya varnasi to deliver the vote of thanks
Uh, good morning to one and all present here. I feel extremely privileged to be presenting the word of thanks during the inaugural ceremony of Alchemy 23. I would like to thank our chief guest, Dr. S. Vasudevan sir, for accepting our invitation and sharing his opinions with us today. His deep interest in us is indeed a great privilege. We hope to continue a humble beneficiary of his support and guidance. Next, I would like to thank our beloved director, ma'am, Dr. G. Aguila, for her effort in making today a successful one. Her confidence in our department and in us is a key factor that ensures the success of alchemy. I would also like to express my gratitude to Sri Venkatamurugan sir for agreeing to deliver the Dr. S. H. Ibrahim Memorial Lecture. My humble appreciation to Sri B. V. Ramanan sir for attending this event. I shall also take this opportunity to thank our HOD Dr. M. Ari Valagan and our faculty advisors Dr. P. Kalai Chalvi and Dr. Kartikeya Shukla for their unwavering faith in us. Last but not the least, I want to express my gratitude to Dr. N. Anantraman sir and Dr. Arunagiri sir for his uh, support and guidance. My gratitude extends to all the faculty and the staff for their valuable thoughts and guidance and also to the Alchemy Corps members and the juniors for being with us to make this grand opening for our department. Every year, Alchemy strives to do things in a bigger and better way than the previous editions and this year is no exception. Today is the first in the set of many dominoes that will fall in place for something big and grand, uh, for something that ends with a bang. Thank you all once again for making this event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, Shreya. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us for today's event. I request the dignitaries to have the refreshments. It's ready. It's outside the hall. I request the students to please wait. Uh, please wait and once the dignitaries are uh, done with their refreshments, you can go ahead.